Well, thank you, everyone, for joining today's session. This is the Aplexus, the Aplexus Expert Series, delivered in partnership with our uh, software partner and technology partner, SAP. We're delivering this session from both Atlanta and from uh, Kerala in India. So we have a few different locations that we're connecting, and we have participants that are joining us from across North America. Today's session is the design of an AI or artificial intelligence-based facial recognition system for retail, the first in the Aplexus Expert Series. Now, to set proper expectations of today's session, artificial intelligence and particularly facial recognition has been in the news. It's kind of a hot topic these days. Both Forbes magazine and USA Today have had recent stories in the front page of the business section or the technology section. Primarily, this is driven by Facebook and the Cambridge Analytical um, problems that they've had. But while this session won't be tackling the social, legal, or customer um, opt-in or opt-out considerations of facial recognition in general, we are working to schedule a separate session that would focus on those types of aspects at a later time. Today's section is um, about and focus on our area of expertise and in the area of science and technology. Our speaker today is a world-class expert on some of the most important topics for technology. He will provide a foundation of knowledge and describe both mathematical and computational models and processes about facial recognition. This isn't a how-to or a hands-on session, but it is technical in nature. This is not a commercial. This is to inform and provide high-level guidance around the technology. The last thing I would say is that it's more tactical than strategic. You'll hear about and you'll see actual facial recognition systems in process, the design, the development, the background. You'll hear practical applications of how they can be deployed in a retail or consumer industry-focused business. The strategic value that you or your employer would get will be identified by the association, the implication of the applications that are being discussed. In general, this will help you better understand the technology and some of its most useful and most practical applications. Our session today is being presented by two organizations, primarily Aplexus. Aplexus is a global systems integrator that provides end-to-end -end business management solutions to retail, fashion, and consumer product companies. Aplexus uses leading technologies including artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, data science and engineering, and the Internet of Things. We're also doing this in conjunction with our partner, SAP, and SAP Leonardo, which brings new technologies and services together to help businesses power their digital transformation. Today's speaker, as I mentioned, is a world-class expert. Dr. Thomas Kokal leads the AI product engineering efforts, the technology strategy, and the machine learning culture at Aplexus. For over 20 years, he has researched and worked on predictive modeling, machine learning, deep learning, neuromorphic computing, and brain-inspired computing architectures. He is one of the longest-serving practitioners of machine learning and has developed AI applications for healthcare, technology, financial, and space systems. Dr. Koakal has spoken um, on AI and ML technologies across the world and has been published in IEEE journals and conferences. With that, I'd like to welcome Dr. Thomas Koakal. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. The topic of today's webinar is the design of an AI-based facial recognition system for retail. An AI-enabled face recognition is important for retail because it helps the retailer to understand their customers better and also it helps them deliver greater customer experiences. The recent advances in AI have significantly improved the accuracy of face recognition. So in this talk, 
uh, we explain the design of a deep learning based facial recognition uh, now deep learning is a technology of ai that has recently created significant breakthroughs in the field of computer vision speech and natural language processing this talk is structured as follows first we give you an overview of machine learning and ai then we present few machine learning I mean use cases in a retail scenario next we introduce a deep learning based face recognition architecture uh, here we state the face recognition problem the challenges faced in face recognition etc the deep learning architecture we discuss today is a convolutional neural network uh, we also give you some computational examples to demonstrate the working of the basic building blocks of a deep learning based convolutional neural network then we present the results of our work on face recognition here at applexus technologies uh, we end the talk with several you I mean applications of face recognition in retail after that we open the session for q and a so what is machine learning machine learning is a study that gives the computers the ability to learn without being explicitly programmed so machine learning is about learning from data or learning from experience and it make predictions on unseen input data for example if you see this block diagram you have a set of inputs the machine learning model produces an output for this set of inputs this out, this output is compared with the desired output and the error is fed back to change the parameters of the model so as to make the output closer to the desired output or target so in the beginning the output will be far away from the target and now as we change the parameters the output will move closer and closer to the desired target this process of changing the weights or changing the parameters is called learning and this learning or the adaptation of weights in a machine learning model is what is different from a standard computation programming now where is this used where is machine learning find applications in so machine learning is an ideal candidate for applications where there is no empirical relationship between the inputs and outputs so the terms ai machine learning and deep learning are all widely used what is the relationship between all these the simplest way is to represent the relationship in concentric circle using concentric circle where ai or artificial intelligence is a is a larger vision where the objective uh, is to build machines that possess the same characteristics of human intelligence well this is still a dream and we are nowhere near of attaining that yet now machine learning is a field that has flourished and has found variety of industrial applications in the past decade or so and deep learning is a subset of machine learning in a broader sense and as i said earlier deep learning has made significant breakthroughs in the field of computer vision speech and natural language processing so deep learning is actually a uh, is based on artificial neural network the artificial neural network is a type of machine learning technique um, that is inspired from the structure and uh, function of the human brain and deep learning is a type of neural network where we use large number of processing layers and using large number of processing layers and using large data sets as inputs the the model accuracy and prediction accuracy is improved so deep learning concept wise it's not new from the time neural network has been there people have been trying to add more and more layers but at the time prediction accuracy was not getting any better so the question is why now uh, it's a confluence of several factors first is availability of large data sets we can see uh, companies like google and facebook have access to large data sets the second is availability of powerful hard hardware 
the advent of GPUs, for example. Uh, finally, uh, we have better algorithms and architectures. We have new network structure design, new training strategies, uh, including better uh, weight initialization um, and using new type of non linearities like ReLU. Uh, we have new architectures where the model accuracy improves with larger data sets and also by adding more number of positive layers. And this has all happened recently and since 2012. Uh, deep learning based face recognition have an accuracy uh, close, if not better than human. So here I give an overview of machine learning applications in a retail scenario. Uh, we can use it in store. Uh, here client learning is a very important um, application. For example, we can use face recognition to improve in store personalization. Uh, to provide an improved one-to-one -one personalized shopping experience. Uh, we can improve customer experiences uh, to understand your customer better by using machine learning models. Uh, we can model customer behavior. We can understand their buying patterns, etc. Uh, we can use it in online retail. Um, we can use machine learning based applications, for example, using computer vision uh, to help customers um, do a visual product search, provide product recommendations. Um, we could use machine learning based natural language processing techniques uh, to understand and analyze blogs, articles, and social media interactions. There are a number of applications of, of machine learning in supply chain management and in inventory management. Uh, for example, uh, self-learning algorithms may be used for optimizing the supply chain. Machine learning could be used to improve demand forecasting and importantly, demand sensing. Uh, demand sensing is um, an important area for machine learning. Uh, demand sensing is about accurate forecast of near-term demand using real-time or downstream signals rather than using only the historical uh, sales data as in conventional methods. We can also employ machine learning models to optimize inventory based on weather and social media trends. So here uh, I provided a snapshot view or an overview of some of the applications of machine learning in, in, in retail. Uh, in this talk, I'm more interested in the facial recognition part. And so the use case I'll be focusing more will be on the client telling part. So what's client telling? In the olden days, say if you walk into a local shop, for example, your local I mean, baker, the moment you walk in, the business owner will recognize you and may greet you. And by the time I think the shop husband might have already started packing your favorite pastry or your favorite loaf of bread. Meanwhile, after greeting you, the business owner would have a conversation with you. Uh, he or she will be eager to hear what you have to say. He may offer you some products. He may give you some gifts, rewards, etc. Now, in the modern time, how do we recreate or how do we rediscover this personalized shopping experience? Face recognition is a key technology enabler uh, for in-store personalization or for a one-to-one -one personalized shopping experience and deep customer engagement. And the focus of this webinar is on the design of deep learning based face recognition for retail. So here we will define the problem statement for face recognition. So given an image or a video scene, identify and recognize one or more persons in the scene from a database of facial images. For example, you are given an image and you have to identify who he is uh, from a database of this sort of given images, facial images. 
Now, who is he? He is Abin. He is a machine learning engineer at App Applexis. As I can understand, like human recognize with experience, the more we see, the faster we perceive. Now, face recognition is an ideal candidate. Now, computer vision uh, is an ideal candidate for machine learning because it's very difficult to model face and its different components using mathematical or empirical techniques. So, computer vision applications like face recognition, object recognition, these are ideal candidate problems for machine learning or AI based applications. So, what are the challenges of face recognition? The first is information redundancy. Here I've taken a very simple example, image of an 100 into 100 facial image. You can see the possible combination of intensity values are very high. So this is an extremely high dimensional space and it's a nonlinear and a complex problem. Another challenge is Inter interpersonal variations. For example, if you take two pictures of the same person, there will be variations in illuminations, there could be variations in pose, there could be partial obstructions, changes in facial expressions, there could be temporal changes, for example, aging. Similarly, there could be interpersonal variations. For example, images of two different persons may look similar. All these make face recognition a challenging problem. What are the main approaches in face recognition? Uh, from a machine learning perspective, we have two different approaches. One is a classical approach. Uh, here we uh, first handpick features. Um, it's called feature engineering. Feature engineering is a process of using domain knowledge of the data to create features. For example, you have domain knowledge on the input image. Based on this knowledge, a set of features are extracted, and then these are classified using a machine learning algorithm. Handpicking or handcrafting features is often difficult, and it's time consuming, and it requires as I said, expert knowledge. And this work on small data sets, but if there are variations in pose, illuminations, these approaches will not work well. Also, they fail on large data sets. So this is where the modern approach or the deep learning approach would come in. Here, instead of using hand-picked features, the network will find features itself. This method works on large data sets and is invariant to pose, illuminations, vertical shifts, etc. These are very good, I mean, there are very good working examples that include Facebook's um, DeepFace and Google's FaceNet, etc. So here I introduce you to the high level block diagram of a face recognition system. So the block diagram consists of Phase detection, phase landmark identification, and phase alignment. So these three blocks are, are the pre-processing stages. Uh, this is before we do, uh, before we apply deep learning on the, uh, the phase recognition on the image. So in the phase recognition stage, we use the pre-processed images to recognize who the person is. So. Ideally, we uh, so so in this block diagram in the in the phase detection stage, we detect whether there is a phase in the image or not. And if there is a phase, uh, we make a facial landmarks of the image, and then carry out a phase alignment, and then apply deep learning techniques to recognize who the person is. So here, I'll explain you the first block, which is the phase detection. So we have the same person, Mr. Ebin here, and we are trying to detect whether there is a phase in this image or not. So 
we use a technique called histogram of oriented gradients. Histogram of oriented gradients is a technique to extract images from an image, uh, extract features from an image, uh, where it captures intensity change in a cell, thereby giving information about edges and shapes. So we can see the uh, the input image and the histogram of oriented gradient of the input image. So, so this this hog features are classified with a support vector machine classifier, and we can see here in this picture there is a trained um, histogram of oriented gradient feature descriptor of a phase of an um, of a normal and ideal phase, and then we do a classification and like a comparison, and then we say, okay, there is a phase in this image, and then we extract this phase from the from this uh, bigger image. So the second step is to align the phase. So first we do a, a landmark detection on the phase, then it is compared with mean landmarks of a reference image. Then we apply an affine transformation to carry out to align the image. You can see here the, in, the input image of Ebin is, is, is slightly tilted and it's aligned by carrying out a affine transformation on the image. Well, what is affine transformation? Affine transformation is just a linear mapping method uh, that preserves points, straight lines, and planes. Uh, for example, a set of parallel lines remain parallel after carrying out an affine transformation. Also, a point uh, lying on a line initially lie on the line after an affine transformation. So, what we are trying to do is to align the image without causing any distortion to the so we have detected and extracted the phase from the image and we have aligned it. So this image is then used for phase recognition using deep learning algorithms. So here there are two steps. First is phase learning. So we have a database, for example, 1 million images of 1K users. We apply this large database to a convolutional neural network, which is a, a type of deep learning architecture. Uh, which we are using. I'll come to that later. And then from there, we extract the features and extract 1K labels. And these features, we keep it as embedded vectors. So that is representing the phase of each user. In the second stage, when a new image arrives, as you can see, in, uh, the, in the second stage, the phase matching stage. And there, when a new image arrives, we extract the features from this image, and then we compare this with a learned feature vector and perform a similarity measurement to decide whether there is a match or not. So there are several different ways to measure similarity. Uh, one way is to employ a Siamese in the network. Uh, this method is in most widely used. Well, there are other methods too, for example, using uh, cosine or Euclidean type sentence for measuring the similarities. So the output of this is whether we have a match or a non-match. So now I'll introduce a deep learning architecture um, called convolutional neural network and also you explain you why it is used and give you some computational examples. Convolutional Neural Network, or CNN, is the most widely used deep learning architecture because it's rugged uh, to shifts and distortions in the images. It's invariant to different poses, illuminations, partial obstructions, horizontal or vertical shifts, etc. It also requires fewer memory requirements. Um, this is because in the convolution layer, the same filter coefficients are used across different well, occasions in the space. So the memory requirement is uh, drastically reduced. 
also there are a lot of proven uh, it also is proven to work well in uh, vision speech and natural language processing so in this uh, I've, in this slide i've shown you there are uh, the building blocks of uh, convolutional neural networks so there are uh, mainly four blocks you have a convolutional layer followed by a nonlinear activation function layer. Um, pooling is a, uh, it's followed by pooling. It's a sub, it's a subsampling layer. Uh, its function is to reduce the spatial dimension of the image. And the output is a fully connected neural network. So here, I'll just give you an overview of learning in uh, CNNs or in neural network in general. So as I said in the beginning, the objective of the neural network is to adjust the parameters so as to make the output as close to the desired output. So how do we achieve it? First, we define some cost functions. Uh, costs are usually errors. And your objective is to try to minimize the cost. So the learning objective is to find the network parameters that minimize a cost function. So where in this convolutional neural network are the parameter adjustment taking place. Um, the filter parameters in the convolutional layer and synaptic weights in the fully connected neural networks are the commonly adjusted or trained parameters uh, to minimize the cost function. Now stochastic gradient descent-based learning is the most popular method used. Um, it, it basically st uh, stochastically sample many batches from a data set. The advantage is um, faster training, uh, more efficient on large data sets, and they provide better generalization or better uh, prediction accuracy compared to gradient descent based uh, the traditional methods. So I have presented the four building blocks of the CNN. So now I will explain the computation in each block with an example, uh, basically to demystify the working of CNN. What is convolution? What is activation function? What is pooling? If you are new to this field. So I have represented an input image with, with, some, with some example values in it representing the, the intensity values. So the first step is the convolution. In convolution, as is a I mean, convolution layer as a filter, and filter will have some weights. For example, 1, 2, minus 3, and 4 are represented weights, which we have shown here. So we take a filter and slide it over the complete image, and basically we take the dot product between the filter and the slice of the input image. For every dot product, we get a result of a I mean, scalar. And the first one, if you multiply 3 times 1, 1 times 2, 0 times minus 3, and 0 times 4. So that's a I mean, dot product between these two slices. And your output will be 5, which is a scalar, and you put that in the grid. And if you shift by one frame, one thing and continue, we get a convolved output. Now this convolved output is passed through a nonlinear activation function. Uh, the activation function uh, introduces nonlinearity in the neural network and um, rectified linear unit or called ReLU is the most commonly used nonlinear activation function. So the ReLU Activation function is shown in figure. Uh, it gives an output x if x is positive and zero otherwise. ReLU is a nonlinear in nature and it's a very good approximator. Uh, one important feature of ReLU is the sparsity of the activation. So consider a big neural network with weights of around, like, say, for example, 40% being negative values. 
Uh, this means by the nature of ReLU, fewer neurons will be, fire, will be firing or activated, thereby making activations uh, quite sparse and efficient. Say, for example, you can see um, in the convolved output, minus 1 and minus 6, the output from the ReLU are 0, 0. And also, ReLU is computationally ex um, less expensive compared to, it's much more efficient uh, because it requires, uh, you can see it's a simpler mathematical equation. The next block is called pooling. Uh, its function is to uh, progressively, I mean, progressively reduce the spatial size of the representation and to reduce the amount of parameters and computation in the, in the deep architecture. There are different ways of pooling. Uh, there are average pooling where we take the average of the slice or the four values which you have initiated. Um, well, but max pooling is the most commonly used. Uh, here we take the maximum of that uh, four values. For example, in 5, 11, 0, and 4, if you do a max pooling, uh, you get an the output is 11. So the same example we are showing on a, I mean, we are showing it on a real image. So we have an input image which is passed through a filter. And we get a convolved output, and then the convolved output is passed through a convolved output is a dot product between the input image and the filter, and this passed through a rectified linear unit. And then we do a pooling uh, we are, where we have shown the max pooling here. So this is how the image would look like an input image after passing through a uh, computational building blocks of CNN. So what is deep learning? So deep architecture is formed by stacking together a number of CNN building blocks. The building blocks which I had explained to you earlier. So they are those simple computation blocks are stacked together to form deep architectures. And um, initially, the filters in the convolutional are initialized randomly, and they are parameters which will be learned by the network as we do the learning procedure, training procedure. Now, deep learning architectures allow for better representation. Um, so for example, fewer computation units can represent the same function. Uh, multiple layers help to impl implement complex functions better. Importantly, deep representations or deep architectures might allow for hierarchical learning. So you can see in this image, uh, there's a natural progression from low level to high level structure as it passes through the convolution layers. So for example, here, um, as seen in the figure, through learning, um, through learning through back progression or, or SGD, we can see that the network has tuned to represent the facial image. And um, deep architecture show the, might allow for hierarchical the I mean hierarchical learning. Uh, so far, I mean, as we can see, as we go deeper to other convolution layers, filters are carrying out dot products of the input of the previous convolution layers. So they are doing a hierarchical learning from pixels to edges, then larger object points, and finally uh, the objects. I mean, for example, the phase here. And the output is represented as an embedded vector. So here we give you some results of our work on phase recognition at Aplexus. First step is uh, phase learning as we have. Uh, so here the profile picture of the image is captured. The deep learning architecture represents the phase as an embedded vector. And the next step is phase matching. So we now provide a new uh, input image, which was not useful uh, 
uh, for training. And we can see the deep learning model correctly recognizes the user. Uh, the username is shown in the bounding box. So we give another uh, new image where the where the person is wearing a sunglass. So she's um, and and the deep learning architecture can still identify the user correctly. This is another use case, I mean, another example where she is wearing a, a scarf covering her head. Uh, still, um, the deep learning architecture could recognize the person correctly. This is, um, she is partially covering her face with a scarf. Uh, again, the deep learning architecture. And also, there are, there mean, I mean, there is a variation in pose and also elimination conditions. Uh, even all this, the, the deep learning architecture can correctly recognize the person. This is another um, another um, input where the person has a side pose, and um, the deep learning architecture could uh, could recognize the person. This is an, um, where we are identifying a group of people, and these are all our AIT members. Avilash has been a major contributor for this uh, project, for this face recognition work. So here we are recognizing a group of people from an input image. So we have this face recognition module. Uh, so what next? Face recognition model can be integrated with a client dialing software, where we have already said the client dialing is one of a, a very uh, important application. So here we have integrated with Applex's client dialing software, and here we show a use case. Uh, for example, the store associate wants to know uh, whether a premium customer has walked in or not. We have identified Sanjana has a premium customer, so when she walks in, a face recognition identifies Sanjana and it talks to the client dialing software and say, okay, uh, she is a premium customer and the store it can take an appropriate action based on this information. For example, one-to-one uh, -one personalized customer engagement or recommend relevant products. Of course, the person has to voluntarily sign in for all this. So finally. I'll give you some more use cases of face recognition. Earlier, I had given you a, or I've introduced you to client dialing and how to use face recognition for one to one personalized to rediscover client dialing like in olden days. But there are several other use cases of face recognition. One is in store traffic analytics. Uh, for example, we can find visit a heat map. For example, dwell time at an aisle. We can initialize the uh, customer path inside the store. Even we can do an emotion recognition of the customer at point of sale. For example, whether they're happy, uh, are they waiting in long queues? We can identify the queue length. We can also use it customer service desk, uh, for example, order online and pick up from store. Uh, we can use for payment and check out through face verification. So there are a number of use cases of face recognition uh, for retail. So with this, we end this uh, technical session. Thank you. Again, this is the Aplexus Expert Series delivered in partnership with SAP. Following today's session, we have a schedule of events. Can you go to the next slide, please? There are a series of topics, including smart supply chain, secrets of omni-channel excellence, blockchain, and big data, particularly regarding migrating from legacy SAP data to S4. 
Thomas, thank you very much for your time and delivering a, a complex topic in 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 a in terms that could be understood certainly by lay people such as myself, who I'm certainly not a mathematician, and I appreciate uh, your ability to explain things at that level. This will end in today's session. Thank you for attending.